So in this series about assessing math proficiency, I've already asked you to consider the number of problems that you are giving students when you are assessing them. And today, I would like you to consider the type of math problems you are giving them. I'm Christina Tonneval, the Recovering Traditionalist, and I hope you will stick around as we look at assessing math proficiency. Does the type of math problems you use matter in our quest to build our math minds so we can build the math minds of our students. Now there's kind of two different camps on this. There are the types of problems that are story problem, really contextual based problems, and then there are problems that are just bare problems. When you just give them like an equation to solve, just a problem that needs solved with no story problem around it. Now, one of the first issues that comes up that I hear a lot is if we use contextual story-based problems, does reading get in the way of being proficient with math? That is a huge concern. But I think that contextual problems are a huge part of mathematics. Now, it isn't just me. Our math practice standards say the same thing. Math practice number two talks about having students decontextualize and contextualize mathematics. What that basically means is that for students to really be seen as proficient, they need to be able to do these math practice standards. It's how they're engaging with mathematics. To be able to decontextualize means that if you are given a contextual problem, a story problem, you are able to pull the mathematics out of that contextual situation. The reverse of that, which is being able to contextualize a situation, is whether or not kids can take a bare problem and create a story problem out of it. We see this far too many times where kids can solve six times seven, but then they can't give you an actual situation that means six times seven. Do they really understand what six times seven means? If so, they should be able to create a story problem or what the math practice standard calls contextualize that situation. So to me, it is a big part of being mathematically proficient is being able to solve problems when they are in a context. Now, the other piece of that, a lot of people will say, well, that what about bear problems? Kids need bear problems, right? And when I was in school, that was it. Like that's all that our problems were about when we were doing math assessments. Everything was just bare problems, just solve six times seven. And most of the time it had multiple choice answers down below it for us to choose from, which most assessments still do. And it sure made for an easy way to grade and to see whether or not kids got them right or not. But to me, that is not fully being proficient. As I talked about before, just because they can solve six times seven does not mean they truly understand the mathematics behind it. So to me, and again, it's not just me. I say this all the time. To me, kids need both. But what I prefer, it's not just me, like I said, what I prefer is this idea from Achieve the Core. They talk about how Kids do need rigor in mathematics, but rigor does not mean harder. Rigor in mathematics is really this three-legged stool. They need exposure to problems that are assessing their conceptual understanding, their procedural fluency, and application type problems. If students do not do all three of these, and if we are not assessing all three of these, it's not giving us a clear picture of their proficiency. So I will link to Achieve the Core's website so that you can go and learn more. But here's just a really quick down and dirty example of the three different types of problems and, and ways you could assess. Let's come back to the six times seven. I go to six times seven because that is honestly one of the hardest multiplication problems. It's the one that even adults tend to get incorrectly or take longer when they are trying to do an assessment. So six times seven. For procedural fluency, that is usually just what is six times seven? Solve six times seven. If I really wanted to assess a child's conceptual understanding, 
A problem might be something like, Sue says that to figure out six times seven, she could do five times seven and then add one more seven. Is she correct? Why or why not? So conceptual understanding is really problems that dig to the root of the mathematical understanding. One of the big ideas around multiplication is helping kids to see groups of. And there's a lot of controversy around this, but when kids are first starting out, they need to see it as groups of. Six times seven is six groups of seven, right? And if I know five groups of seven, could that help me figure out six groups of seven? That connection is super huge for building a solid foundation of what multiplication is and how we can solve multiplication problems. So conceptual understanding type problems really need to build and assess that foundational piece. Then application problems are the story problems that I talked about in the beginning of this video. If we gave it to them in a context, would they be able to solve that problem? And it may not be a groups of problem. Maybe in this one, I might wanna do something where it's kind of like arrays, but I might have something like, Sue has six books on every shelf. She has seven shelves in her bookcase. How many books does she have on her bookcase? And that image, to me, when I'm imagining it, it brings up kind of an array in my mind, but for some kids it might not. So the application type problem is usually a contextual problem to see whether or not kids can solve this in a contextual or story problem format. So we need to assess all three of these areas. Kids need exposure to all three, and we do need to assess using all three of these areas to really see whether or not students are proficient. If you're only assessing procedural fluency, you are only getting one of those legs. If you're only giving contextual situations, it's only one of those legs. We need to have kids working in all three, thus we need to assess all three areas. All right, I hope that this video has helped you build your math mind so that you can go build the math minds of your students. Have a great day.